Jada Pinkett Smith, Unearthed Video Total Devaluation of Will Smith Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. A number of you will have probably come across a short clip that has been unearthed, which shows Jada Pinkett Smith engaged with her husband Will in what looks like the kitchen of their home. Thank you to those of you that recommended it to me for me to analyse, and I'm pleased to do so, as, goodness me, are you in for a further eye-opener when you watch this, if you haven't already seen it, and moreover, of course, with my excellent analysis of it, well, this is really going to cause you to understand more about her behaviours, and of course narcissism, in the round. It's unclear when this was actually filmed, might have been a number of years ago but ultimately that's not hugely important what's clear is this was filmed during the sustained devaluation of will smith meaning that the golden period of their relationship was over and he moves into a period of sustained devaluation where she engages in a range of manipulations which are unpleasant and malign in order to achieve the prime aims in relation to him Looks like Will might be making himself something to eat, maybe a sandwich. He's just going about his day when, all of a sudden, a phone camera is directed towards him. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let the footage play in its entirety to begin with so that you can experience it all in one go and then you can formulate your own thoughts about what's going on here and also those of you who understand my work perhaps have a go at seeing what you can identify in terms of the various indicators of narcissistic behaviour and the nature of the dynamic between narcissist and empathic victim. And then we're going to go through it, stopping at appropriate parts to dissect it and open up your mind to further understanding. So let's have the footage in its entirety first. You know Esther Perel is coming to the table. She's going to be at the red table. Would you say she has been instrumental in you and I redefining our relationship? I would say don't just start filming me without asking me oh my goodness. if you could film Astaire, me. Esther, come help us again, please. I'm still dealing with foolishness. Don't. No, nah, no, nah, she, yeah, because she, don't just. Would you say that she helped us heal the hurts that we caused between one another? My social media presence is my bread and butter, okay? So you can't just use me for social media and not, you know, don't just start rolling. I'm standing in my house. Don't just start rolling. Don't Please start. watch a stare at the red table because she's helped us a lot. Can't you tell? You know, a stare Perel is coming to the table. She's going to be at the red table. Would you say she has been instrumental in you and I redefining our relationship? Okay, so you've seen the footage in its entirety. You're starting to form some views. Let's break it down. Now, viewed in isolation, you might not necessarily be able to make a determination as to what the two people are. However, even viewed in isolation, you would be able to think, well, actually, her behavior isn't very good. It might not take you in the direction of thinking, oh, she's a narcissist, and it might not take you in the direction of thinking he's an empath. But on viewing that, the general reaction, leaving aside questions of narcissism, etc., would be, I think she was rather rude, thrusting the camera in his face, uh, talking over him, ignoring him, and he seemed remarkably patient in his responses. That would probably be the response of a normal individual viewing that who was not aware of the intricacies of the narcissistic dynamic. It's always important to point out to people that when you see certain behaviour, you can identify that the behaviour is viewed as poor, unnecessary, etc., from that particular perspective. But it's also important to understand what the driver is behind it. So take, for example, you go into a convenience store and there's a lady in there who's shouting and screaming. She's throwing tins of food around at the shopkeeper. She's trying to vault onto the counter to try and steal money out of the till. Clearly, her behaviour is out of order. You can see that she is assaulting that shopkeeper by flinging tins at him. 
She's destroying property. She's trying to steal. She's being verbally abusive. So you'd label those behaviours as inappropriate and wrong. But are you dealing with a narcissist or not? Well, in that one instance, you wouldn't be able to make a determination. For instance, she might be a narcissist because... She's acting with a sense of entitlement. She's showing no accountability for her behaviour. She's using manipulations, albeit rather rudimentary ones, of destruction of property, theft, verbal abuse. She is showing an ignition of fury. She's demonstrating what must be a response to a threat to her control. And she's looking to assert control over this shopkeeper. Therefore, examining that scenario, one can see narcissistic indicators in it. Or... Are you dealing with an individual who has had her emotional empathy eroded so that she's essentially at her end of the tether and her narcissistic traits come out? And further examination reveals that she's got three children at home that she needs to feed. Her husband is very unwell and isn't able to work. She's just lost a job. She's tried to pay for some food and her card has been declined. And these background circumstances, the stress that she's under, and the current problem of financial pressure in that moment has eroded her emotional think, uh, emotional empathy, rather, resulting in this outburst. You witness that behaviour, could be a narcissist, could be somebody with eroded emotional empathy. It doesn't change the nature of the behaviour. The behaviour would be viewed as wrong, but the driver behind it is different. In the same way as we saw with the now famous slap at the Oscars, most people recognise that slapping Chris Rock was not something that should have been done because it was a physical assault. But you've been able to understand the driver behind it. Many people have got it wrong. I've explained in a separate video what that driver was. Here, we can see again that her behaviour towards Will Smith is wrong. But what's the driver? Fortunately for you, you know that it's her narcissism that's driving her behaviour because we've established that by looking at a huge body of evidence and this just underpins her behaviour. So stopping after 10 seconds, what do we have? Well, first of all, she's just started filming. That's an assertion of control over Will Smith. It exhibits her sense of entitlement, a lack of boundary recognition. She doesn't recognise that although they're in their own home, he's entitled to a degree of privacy nevertheless. She doesn't show any accountability for her behaviour. She hasn't sought permission beforehand and said, Will, I want to do a short clip for my forthcoming Red Table talk. Is it okay if I ask you some questions about it? Will Smith would probably be amenable to that. But of course, she, she driven by her narcissism, doesn't feel that that's necessary. You, Will Smith, are an appliance. You're a television set. I don't ask my television set, can I switch you on? No, I just switch it on. So in the same way, and this is what's going on in her unconscious, you do what I require of you. I don't need to ask permission of you. Now, in her world, if someone was to say to her, well, ought, you, ought for you to have asked his permission before you started filming, you would be challenging her by asking her such a question. And a narcissism would probably say something like, well, I don't need to. He's my husband. That's how we roll. So she nullifies your threat posed by your question. She could even say, oh, I did. Revision of history. A lie. But it's evident that she has not done so. And therefore, we see the assertion of control, a sense of entitlement, a lack of boundary recognition, a lack of accountability for the behaviour, and, of course, no emotional empathy for how this makes Will Smith feel. She then poses a question by, or rather, she starts talking, saying, you know, Esther, I think it sounds like Pereira, but I could be wrong. You know, Esther Pereira is coming to the table. She's going to be at that table. Now, Will's probably thinking, oh, that fucking table, not that fucking red table again. But there's no introduction, just straightforward announcement, entitlement and triangulating Will with the red table and its guest. She then asks, would you say she has been instrumental in you and I redefining our relationship? Did anybody order any word salad? Because it's arrived. Here she comes up with this relationship shite once again. Jada, you're married to Will. That's the nature of your relationship. That's the definition, husband and wife, spouse. But of course, Jada Pinkett Smith, in common with certain narcissists of her ilk, gets on this whole 
let's examine our relationship and we need to go on this journey into defining what our relationship is and has no doubt found some expensive claptrap spouting charlatan who has supported Jada Pinkett Smith by saying, hey, it's okay to fuck someone else if you're unhappy and I'll validate your affair for you and guess what? You can heal young men by bouncing up and down upon their dicks. When she states all of this, she is exhibiting her sense of entitlement. She's just using him as publicity, sees him as an appliance, residual benefit. Notice that he is listening to her. He doesn't immediately interrupt. And she's presumptuous in terms of what she's doing, what she's asking. And we then, in the next segment, see what his reaction is to these various manipulations that have been doled out against him. I would say don't just start filming me without asking me oh my goodness. if you could film Astaire, me. Astaire, come help us again, please. I'm still dealing with... Halting at 21 seconds of the original footage, we notice that after she poses the question, Will looks thoughtful, and you can see that he's fighting to keep his narcissistic trait of anger in check as he replies, I would say... Don't just start filming me without asking me if you could film me. That is not an unreasonable response. Note, he doesn't snap at her. He doesn't shout at her. He doesn't lash out at her. He doesn't try and push the camera away. He stands there and he looks considered. If Will Smith were a narcissist, the most likely response would have been, because her comment and questions and filming would be a threat to his control, would be to shoot her a pained look, would to become irritated as his ignited fury would rise for him to snap at her. Not this fucking filming again. How many times have I told you not to do this? To raise his voice and lash out. Instead, you can see that he looks weary. And this is clearly not the first time that she's behaved in this manner of just doing things without seeking his prior permission or approval. He looks run down, battered, weary. Of course, his response is not the one that she's seeking, and therefore it threatens her sense of control. He issues a challenge fuel to her. He gives her fuel, which her narcissism wants, but his response isn't one where he answers the question that she's posed about, would you say she's been instrumental in you and I redefining our relationship? And therefore, he has threatened her sense of control. Note her response is not, oh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, I should have sought it, would you mind answering, though? Or, oh, please, go on, just do it for me. Try to use a little bit of charm. But instead she says, oh, my goodness. And she interrupts him as he's speaking, which shows a sense of entitlement and no boundary recognition. And then, as if Will Smith doesn't exist, she turns the camera onto herself and states, a stare, come and help us again, please. I'm still dealing with foolishness. She invalidates Will Smith. She insults Will Smith. She triangulates Will Smith with this relationship guru or however it is. She ignores his protest. She's dismissive and condescending and exhibits no emotional empathy for her husband. Notice that he's tried to assert a boundary by saying, you should not start filming me without asking me. She just completely ignores that. She doesn't bump up against the boundary that he tries to assert. She just walks straight through it, tramples all over it. She keeps filming. She doesn't address what he has to say. And she just carries on doing what she wants. And this is something you should take note of. There are many people that say that one of the things that empathic victims ought to do is assert boundaries with narcissists. Forget it. That is poor advice. We don't recognise boundaries. We just trample over them in the way that Jada Pinkett Smith does. The only boundary you put in place with a narcissist is that of no contact. Attempting to assert one while proximate in the way that Will Smith does, you see how it fails. She just carries on regardless. Foolishness. Don't. No, no, she, yeah, because she... Don't. Pausing the footage at 24 seconds originally...
Will Smith then, in response to her reaction, states, don't, nah, nah, yeah, because she don't, just, he's lost for words. His response is akin to somebody who looks like they've just been told, it's more torture time, and they're going to be dragged back into room 101. He can't even string a coherent sentence together. He's exhausted, he's weary, he can't believe what he's hearing, he's almost at, I can't believe this shit's carrying on, I just don't know what to say, and shows that reaction to her behaviour demonstrates that he's in the midst of the sustained devaluation that he's being ground down regularly by being subjected to her high-handed arrogance her sense of entitlement and repeatedly being triangulated dragged in front of these supposed relationship experts to enable her to find herself to work out her inner happiness and all of this nonsense will smith with his empathic traits has clearly gone along with it the people pleaser that he is even though he sees that it's not getting him anywhere, but he at least has tried and endeavoured to make her happy. And it just gets thrown in his face as foolishness. And he's dismissed as usual. I'll just... Would you say that she helped us heal the hurts that we caused between one? Pausing the footage originally at 30 seconds, Jada Pinkett's response is, would you say that she helped us heal the hurts that we caused between one another? She just ploughs on, ignores the boundary attempt, boundary assertion attempt, rather. She is trying to force him to agree with what she has to say. She exhibits her sense of entitlement. There's no accountability for the behaviour. There's no emotional empathy for him. She doesn't even read his reaction to the extent of thinking... He's clearly troubled. I should stop. No, she simply doesn't care. Her icy, high-handed approach is such where, basically, she just carries on, asking him a question, thinking, this is foolishness. You're not embracing the work that we've been doing. You, Mr. Smith, are the problem in this relationship because her narcissism tells her that he is. She can't see. Or rather, she sees that he looks troubled. But her um, lack of emotional empathy doesn't cause her to think, he's troubled, I should stop this and put a, give him a hug. No, her narcissism basically states, yes, he looks troubled, but that's his fault. He's brought it on himself. So he's not even going to get some cognitive empathy, sympathy from us. No, 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 no. And you can see with Smith's reaction that he looks down and looks quite simply sick to death of the behaviour that he's been subjected to. Another. My social media presence is my bread and butter, okay? So you can't just use me for social media and not, you know, don't just start roll. I'm standing in my house. Don't just start rolling. Don't Please start. watch a stare at the red table because she's helped us a lot. Can't you tell? The clip ends at roughly 49 seconds. So in the preceding 19 seconds, what have we witnessed? Well, Will Smith goes for some more boundary assertion. My social media presence, he says, is my bread and butter. So, you can't just use me for social media and not, you know, just start rolling when I'm standing in my house. Not an unreasonable response at all. He attempts most reasonably to assert a boundary, and he also explains why her behaviour is wrong, and why he is stating, adopting the position that he is. What's her response to that? Please watch her stare at the red table as she's helped us a lot. Can't you tell? Okay. She tramples on that boundary once again. She asserts control over him by, in essence, ignoring his protest. She demonstrates no accountability for her behaviour. She just carries on, irrespective of the impact that it's having upon him. She exhibits her rampant sense of entitlement. And she's deluded. It seems to me that even where she states, can't you tell? It does, doesn't even appear to be done in a sarcastic way. It appears to me that she actually seriously believes that this person has helped them. And she's utterly deluded. And when she says she's helped us, what she means is this person has helped her. 
and has helped her basically continue to control her husband by triangulating him with whatever pseudo bollocks this person has been spouting, which Jada Pinkett Smith then adopts by character trait acquisition and then passes off as her own thoughts and alongside the triangulation to continue to control him in a malign way. There the clip ends, and it provides us with a superb example in less than a minute of so many aspects of the narcissistic dynamic. And I would encourage you to share this video as far and as wide as you possibly can so people understand precisely what she is. It's also worth pointing out that presumably she then went and put this clip on social media. Otherwise, how has it come to be unearthed? And therefore, that also exhibits a sense of entitlement to put their private life on social media, which, of course, many narcissists do. You see it repeatedly. It also shows a lack of emotional empathy. He's protested. He said he's not happy, but she doesn't give a fig about Will Smith. She just carries on and does what she wants. Shows no accountability for her behaviour. It shows the need to assert control over her audience by triangulating them with Will Smith. It shows that she has no emotional empathy because she wants to expose the foolishness. Because she wants to get that validation that she's right and that he's the problem in the relationship. Anybody watching this, if they still think that Will Smith is a narcissist, well, quite simply, you're a clown. And the evidence that I provided already, combined with this, will demonstrate to you that he's not. Furthermore, if you doubt that Jada Pinkett Smith is a narcissist, you really ought to go and have your head examined. The only evidence supports that's what she is. And therefore, this is just further confirmation of her behaviours. I'm sure you found this useful, not only in just un seeing how she behaves, and many of you will be probably going, goodness me, what a piece of work she is, but also more importantly, of using it to understand more about the way that a narcissist behaves, so that you can see the sense of entitlement, the failure to be accountable, the treatment of boundary assertion, the various manipulations that are used against her. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.